So what's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk a little bit about business and the six main reasons why I got involved with regenerative farming permaculture if you want to call it. And with my background in marketing, a lot of people have been stunned about the career path I've gone down going from going on stage sometimes in front of a few thousand people to out here with my cows. And the main reason why I wanted to do it was, one, because I really just wanted to. This is the lifestyle that I've always wanted to live. This is how I thought I'd retire. But I was able to see through the teachings of someone like Joel Salatin what a profitable business this can be. So here are the six things that I look for when I'm joining any kind of business or getting into any industry. Number one, the first thing that I look for is the sustainability, which is kind of funny because it's not sustainability for the landscape, it's sustainability for the business. You see, in any economic downturn, the last thing that people stop spending their money on is their health and their food, which is kind of one and the same, really. The first thing to go are the vacations, all the extras. The last thing to go is stuff that people need to survive and really just need to be healthy. And let me tell you something, grass-fed, grass-finished Longhorn beef checks off that category 100%. And then also in this world that we're living in where things change like that, it's not like a slow change like it used to be, it's an instant change. From a job security or a business security point of view, you have to see if that position is gonna be there in five to 10 years. And the way that you can do that, I heard this from somebody, I don't really remember who it was, but I heard this from somebody and it really made a lot of sense to me. If your job position was around 2,000 years ago, you can probably bet that's gonna be around for another 2,000 years. You see, some people today go to college for social media marketing or stuff to do with social media. But by the time they're a freshman to the time that they're a senior, the stuff they learn from when they were a freshman is irrelevant. Why? Because things change so fast. Google and Facebook can switch up their algorithms with the snap of a finger. Same thing with Instagram. Look at a company like IBM. They were the top of the top of the top, what, 15, 20 years ago. Now, they're eh, they're okay. Most of the people working for them 15, 20 years ago don't have a job anymore. Why? Because the world changed and, and innovation happened and made things better. Look at JCPenney. They, they've been around for 80, 100 years. Boom, they're gone. Why? Amazon took their place, Walmart took their place. It's sad to see because people are losing their jobs, but that's just the nature of the beast. But if you can see that an industry has been around for 2,000 years, like farming has, you can probably bet that it's gonna be around for another 2,000 years. Now, has there been innovations? Of course. Like this right here, this, this electric fence, this poly wire. That wasn't around 2,000 years ago, it just made the industry better. So I'm willing to bet that farming will be around for another 2,000 years and I'll be long dead by then, so it doesn't matter to me. So all my chips going on the table in that. See, most people are thinking, oh, you gotta be up with the times, you gotta be into the future, blah, 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 blah. No, sometimes when everybody says go forward, you need to go backwards. And that's what we're doing here. Instead of trying to keep up, keep up, keep up, we go backwards to something that's stable and just watch people run the race themselves. The second thing that I look for when I'm looking at any industry is something that I learned about 10 years ago, and that's linear income versus leveraged income. Now, some people might get leveraged income confused with passive income. Let me tell you something. I don't care who you are, passive income does not exist. Why? Because some people say, oh, you know what? Just put your money in the stock market and it'll make money for you over time. If you don't manage that, especially in today's time, that money is gonna be poof, gone. One of the reasons why we started a YouTube channel was because of the if you want to call it passive income because the videos stay up forever and people can go watch them and eventually we'll get paid off of the ads. Well, let me tell you something right now. If I go three weeks without putting up a video, that channel is going to go, Pfft. that's not passive income. You always have to be managing it. I don't care what business it is. I don't care what industry it is. There's no such thing as passive income. So don't jump on that bus. Don't get involved with anybody that's talking like that because it just does not exist. I don't care who you are. What leveraged and linear income are, Linear income is where you trade your time for money. I don't care if it's the trash guy or if it's a doctor. If the doctor stops seeing patients, his money stops. If the trash guy stops picking up trash, his money stops. Leverage income, on the other hand, and I really want to call it efficient income, okay? Let's, talk, let's, let's call it efficient income. Efficient income is to where you don't have to trade your time for money. Okay, to where you can take a step back and money still keeps coming in. Now, what's the difference between that and passive income? Passive income, oh, it's, it's one of these things where people say, oh, you build it up, you build it up, you build it up for the first, you know, two, three years, and then you sit back and collect money. That ain't going to happen. doesn't matter what it is. doesn't matter if it's real estate to where you're just collecting rent. 
Because if you don't manage that property or have somebody else manage it for you, it's gonna go down. It doesn't matter who's your renter. Things are gonna get broken. Things are, people aren't gonna pay the rent. The house will just sit there vacant. You have to be able to manage it. Now what I like to talk about efficient income, efficient income is to where you make the most amount of money for the time that you do have to put in. You see, look, check this out. The cows out here, they're gone now. Why? Because they're eating. They're eating grass and they're gonna eat grass whether or not I'm out here watching them eat grass. They're working for me. See, I put in, you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes a day moving them because it helps keep up the grass and all the benefits of daily moves and rotational grazing. But that's 15, 20 minutes. The cows are working for me 24 seven. You see, I put in a little bit of time every day, but the returns are massive. You see, say a cow, we're gonna go real low. They average one pound a day for gain. That's pretty low, by the way. And I know we have heifers here, we have steers here, we, and we have a bull. We'll just say we're gonna sell all of them for meat, and the way we're gonna do it is we're gonna sell direct to consumer. That way, there's no middleman, it just goes from us, the farmers, to them, the consumers. The average price that we'll sell a pound of ground beef for is $8. And we'll say that each of these cows put on one pound of weight per day, okay? So that's eight times 13. That gives us 104. Now let's take out the 30% loss with all the butchering and all the things going on. This is not counting the hide or the horns or any other bones that we sell for dog biscuits, okay? So, so times that by 0.7, that gives us $72.80. They make per day just being out here on grass, putting on that weight. Now it takes me about 20 minutes, half an hour at the most to move them. So let's see how much I get paid per hour if you want to call it. Times two, because it's half an hour. That's $145.60 on average per working hour that I put in here. Name somewhere else you can get paid $145 an hour. And that's only when we have 13 cows. Wait till we have 30. Now I know there's a lot of variables into that, you know, the cost of the land, cost of the fence, cost of whatever. But just looking at it from that perspective, there's a ton of wiggle room there. And that's what you call efficient income. And that's how I like to make money, either in really large chunks or in small drips. And I only have to put in a little bit amount of time and effort. So regenerative farming, just from the cow perspective, checks off that box. Now the third thing I look at is the marketplace, okay? Who's gonna buy this? And is this feasible for people to buy? Now always, for a small business, the rule of thumb is don't try and make your money on volume. It's just not gonna happen. For most, some can do it, some can do it, but, the most, but most of the time, it's so hard to get one customer that you need to be able to make a large amount of money per customer. You see, it's a lot easier to get 100 people to spend $1,000 a year with you than it is for 1,000 people to spend $100 a year with you. So is the price that we're gonna be selling beef at a lot more expensive than you would find in the grocery store? Absolutely. But the people that want it, we're gonna be able to show this to and they'll be able to pay for it. So we're always looking to go and shoot for the higher end market with the potential for people that don't necessarily make as much money to be able to afford it if they want, if they want to. Because if you wanna eat healthier, you know what? You'll find a way to do it. Whether that's cutting back on your cable, whether it's cutting back on whatever, if you wanna eat healthier, people will find a way to do it. Now the fourth thing that I look for when starting any kind of business is the profit margin. And we talked about that a little bit earlier on the time per hour needed to spend to make the kind of money that we're making. So there, we're able to hire people, especially when we grow our herd and not really have it cut into our profits. Since it's easier to find 100 people that'll spend $1,000 a year with you than it is for than it is to find a thousand people that'll spend $100 a year with you. It's also a lot easier to sell a hundred of a thousand dollar product than it is a thousand of a hundred dollar product. And I think uh, Betty here will agree with me. And that also plays into the part of the efficient income. Now number five, the fifth thing that I look into when starting any business is the timing. The timing is absolutely critical to any business. See, cassettes. Cassettes made a lot of money when they first came out, but right now, there's no money in cassettes, why? Because that time passed. Right now, especially with everything going on in the world and just the way society's trending, people are looking to eat healthier. See, in my opinion, a lot of people go vegetarian or vegan because they see how the animals are raised. When they see the pigs and chickens in the confinement house, when they see the cattle on the feedlot, people don't want to eat that. But when they come out here and they can see that Betty here is licking a salt block right now because that's very natural, and then she's gonna go back to eating grass and drinking clean water.
guess what? That's natural. That's something that people can get behind. And that's why a lot of vegans or vegetarians are coming back to eating meat because they have an option that they can agree with. But you look at like even Walmart, they're carrying organic products now. Why? Because people are looking for that. And you know what? We're going way beyond that. And we're producing the healthiest food that we can possibly produce anywhere. Look at this. There she goes. She's eating grass, eating what she's supposed to be eating. Moved every day so there's no parasites, letting the grass regrow, and she's being a happy cow. Uh, right now, the potential for regenerative farming or regenerative agriculture is just, it's about to explode. Why? Because there's things like YouTube and Facebook that can show people there's a different way. And when you see that there's a different way, how can you go back? How can you go eat a chicken that was raised in a confinement house? It just looks disgusting. A pig, a cow standing in a feedlot up to its knees in manure. I mean, how can you? No, you have to go with something like this. Why? Because it's the only logical thing to do. And sixth, last but not least, the potential for growth, which also ties into the timing because I believe that there's gonna be a lot more people looking for this going forward in the next 10 years. I believe this industry is gonna quadruple. But you also have to look around. One of the things that we need is land. Land is key to this type of farming. And you see, when the average age of the American farmer is over 60 years old, there's, there's a lot of potential for you to swoop up a lot of land pretty quickly and at a pretty decent price. It's been shown, like Joel Southen says, when any economic sector, when the average age of its employees or participants is over the age of 35, then that's an industry or a sector in downturn. The average age of the American farmer is 60 years old. In the next 10 to 15, maybe even 20 years, my bet is over 90% of farmland is gonna exchange hands, whether it be passed down or sold. And for me, my goal is to be able to put myself and us in position to be able to swoop up as much of that land as we can, especially around this East Texas area that we're living in. Whether that be leasing the land or buying the land, preferably buying it. And because we get the most out of the land and here, we've basically doubled production in the first year, we can pay a little bit more for that land because it's worth more to us. So combined with the timing, the potential for growth here is just, it's, it's mind boggling. So those are the six reasons why I got involved with this regenerative farming, this regenerative agriculture. And I just, and I hope just maybe I can inspire one or two people, hopefully just from this video, to take a look into this, to say, you know what? I'm tired of that desk job. I'm tired of doing what I'm doing. I wanna go do that. Now it takes some time and takes some learning, but you know what, it's 100% possible. So with that, hit that subscribe button down below, ring the notification so you get notified when we put up new videos. Hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and drop a comment if you like, all right? Until next time, see ya.